Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 16, look at that. Verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 16, looking at verse 1. Amen. How many got your watch with you today? You got a watch on your arm? Alright, everybody set their, their watch. You got a little clock on there. Set it for 30 minutes. Set it for 30 minutes. So what does that mean, preacher? Absolutely nothing. Take that watch and put it in your pocket. Amen? Amen. Hey, hey, isn't it important that we take time out for God? Yeah. What are we in a hurry about? Amen. What's everybody always in a hurry on Sunday? Well, you know, we've got to beat the Baptists to the rest. No, I'll tell you, the good food is after the Baptists sleep. Amen? Yeah, right. So I'm going to hold you to the Baptists are gone from your favorite restaurant, and when you get there, all the food is good, fresh and neat. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I, I heard Jensen Franklin say that the other day. I just had to try. Amen. See what it sounds like for myself. Harrison. Amen. Just put your watch in your pocket. You don't need it. Amen. Don't mean nothing. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? See, I have rejected him for reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and go. And I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of your holy word. We thank you, Lord, for your divine presence in this church. You have blessed us with your grace. You have blessed us. We can feel your power. We can feel your anointing. We can feel your spirit in the sanctuary. Father, we pray for the children's church workers. God bless them, encourage them. And Father, we ask you to meet us right here where we are in this sanctuary. That you would anoint our ears to receive and to comprehend. And anoint our minds, Lord, to soak in the knowledge of God. I just serve you behind the cross and let your anointing flow. In the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said, Amen. amen and Amen. Hallelujah. If you did, if you wasn't here on Friday night, um, we got a good video of it on our YouTube channel. Y'all know we got Battle Church of God YouTube. Uh, all, all of our sermons are recorded and put on there. Most of them anyway. And so I encourage you to go back and watch it. If you wasn't here Friday night, you need to go back and watch it. I'm telling you, it was a good, good word. But God's got a good word for us this morning as well. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long would thou mourn for Saul? You know, as pastor, I, I mourn. I do. I mourn for people. You know, there's, there's, not a, there's not another job on this planet, I think, where you get your heart broke more than being a pastor. I, I, I mourn. I still pray for people that left the church six months ago. Two years ago. I think about them in the middle of the night. I begin to pray for them. My heart still mourns. I still look out at the congregation. I can remember exactly where they see. Amen? And in my mind's eye, I can still see them sitting there. Amen? Amen? But look at what God asked Samuel. He said, how long will you mourn? Notice that this mourning that Samuel was going through was not from God. God had already moved on. Church, sometimes we need to move on. Sometimes we need to stop mourning. Hello? We need to check ourselves and say, am I mourning out of me or is this God in me? Because sometimes the Holy Spirit can give you a mourning and a burden for somebody. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. But I've learned this pastor, the fact the more you chase them, the faster they run. Amen? Amen. Oh yeah. They'll run fast. Amen. I can't keep up with them. I ain't younger than I used to be. I used to go keep up with them. You know, I grab them back and hey, hey, where you running go? Come back to church. I can't catch them anymore. But praise God. Some folks we have to let go. Amen. Some folks we can't be mourning over no more. So you need to question yourself if you're in mourning. Is it from God or is it me? And if it's you, let it go. That's that little song that my little kids sing all the time. Y'all you know, little grandbabies always sing it. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. That song about ice, the ice girl, whatever. You know, let it go. <laughs> Amen. I can't sing it near as good as my little granddaughter did. But let it go. Verse 12 says, And he sent and brought him in, 
And he was a ruby and with all a beautiful countenance. And good to look to. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. And Samuel took the horn of oil. You need to highlight that to underline that right there. Horn of oil. And anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and he went to Ramah. So notice the horn of oil. We're talking about the scene where King David is anointed king. God asked Samuel, how long are you going to mourn over Saul? For I had rejected him from being king. Then he tells him to go get his horn and put some fresh oil in your horn. You see, I woke up this morning and I put my preaching boots on to tell you to put some fresh oil in your horn. Yeah. Put some fresh oil in your horn. He told Samuel to fill the horn up. Go down to Jesse's house. He's got a king down there. But I love how God thinks, you know. I mean, Samuel, he looked at the tallest one and said, well, that must be it. And I'm so glad God rejects the tall ones because I, I never was tall. Amen? Amen. I was born short, grew up short, and I guess I'll die short. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Anybody out there with me? Anybody going to die short with me? Amen? I got good news for you. God rejected the tall person. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. So what? They wouldn't let us play basketball. God rejected the tall person. Amen. <laughs> I couldn't dribble in. Maybe that had something to do with the basketball. Amen. But I want you to see how God does not look at the appearance of man. Come on. God looks at the heart and the soul. And God saw a little boy come to the door. I imagine he was covered up. I imagine what that word really means. He covered up dirt and dust. He's after sleeping with sheep. Hello? He said, has anybody ever went camping? Amen. I remember, I remember, brother, I don't know how it was for you, but when I went, when I was in the army, we'd go out on these, these wonderful camp meetings. You know, we out there having a camp meeting. You know, we were out there in Savannah, Georgia, out in the swamps, having a camp meeting out there. And we'd be over in New Mexico having a camp meeting out there in the army. You know, we were, we were playing soldier, playing army. And uh, my wife would tell you, when I got home, she wanted me to leave my clothes outside because I didn't have a washing machine for three or four weeks. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. She said, leave your nasty, stinking things outside. And the first thing you need to do before you kiss me is go jump in that shower. You stink. Amen. So I imagine that David, sleeping with the sheep, he didn't smell so good. He didn't look so good. Amen. His hair might have been a little messed up, you know? Amen? So, Pastor, how your hair always look good? It's called hairspray. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I asked my wife one time, I said, what did you do to your hair? It looks so good. She said, I took a shower. I said, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, ladies. You take a shower, all of a sudden your hair looks perfect, right? Amen. <laughs> but I can imagine David just didn't look so good. But God looked at his heart. And God told Jesse, get the horn that's got the fresh oil in it and anoint this little boy to be king of all of Israel. Amen. Notice the scripture says from that moment forward, the anointing of God, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the council was upon David from the moment he was anointed. Hallelujah. Listen, church, we need to be anointed today. We need the fresh oil. I've been preaching to you about the, about the oil and the anointing and the Holy Ghost and the anointing power of God. I guess this is probably the fifth week or sixth week, I don't know. But let me tell you how God is. We got up there last week and Dr. Tim Hill, our general overseer, he started talking about the anointing. He started talking, as he went on from the anointing, they started talking about the glory of God. And God put in my spirit as soon as I saw Dr. Tim Hill say that, and as soon as he said it, it hit me that the glory of God is the illumination of the anointing.
The next night came Jensen Franklin. And Jensen Franklin, what did he preach on? The fresh anointing. Matter of fact, his message inspired me this morning. I'm going to post something. I'm going to teach you some of the same things that Jesse told me. Amen. On that night. It's all right. I all came from the Holy Ghost anyway. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to preach it better than he did. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, the scripture tells us that Samuel carried the anointed oil in a horn that was hollowed out. So in the Bible times, horns were cut off and horns were hollowed out. And the oil would be poured in there for, for the freshness of it. I guess the horn would just keep it fresh a whole lot longer than anything else. It was easier to carry. So horns were used in, in the old days for many tools. We know through a study of history that horns were used for many different tools that mankind came up with through the years. And so carrying the anointing was one of those tools that the horns were used for. Horns were also used to make trumpets. Come on. And the trumpet, listen, it would be the battle cry. Some of y'all need to get a horn this morning and declare the victory over the devil and declare your battle cry. Amen. Amen. One of these days I'm going to get my hands on one of those shafars and we're going to learn how to blow that thing and praise God over this place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I uh, think Jesse and I have been talking about that last week. I think it was something about the shafar. We need to learn to blow that thing and, and let the battle cry come out. Listen, let the anointing flow through the trumpet of the horn. Amen. Let the anointing flow through the horns of the altar again. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll let you use my crew. Come on. Amen, Frankie. I'm going to keep you on that one. At the altar of God, described in Leviticus, there were four horns. One horn at each corner. And, and the priest would take the sacrifice that the people would bring for the, for the offering of sin. And they would, they would slay that animal. And they would put it in that altar. And then the altar had the four corners was the horns of the altars. So these horns were coming up out of these altars on each corner. And it was called the horn of the altar. And Leviticus tells us that when you needed mercy, if you killed somebody by accident, and somebody was pursuing you to kill you, and you needed mercy, you would run to the horn of the altar. Come on. And you would grab hold of the horn of the altar and cry for mercy. And that was your battle cry for God to save you. Listen, church, it's time that we get a hold of the horns of the altar again and cry for mercy, oh God, have mercy. I'm going to tell you something I never told you before. I've been here three years now, so I can start to share some things with you. But when I first walked through the doors of that church, I said, that looks like a horn, and that looks like a horn. My God, they got the horns in the altar. Hallelujah. Hang on to the horn in the altar, church, and get back right with God. Call on the mercy of God. Woo, they had two more than we four, would they? Amen. Amen. But we got the horns in the altar in the church. But we need to call on God for mercy. Psalms 92 verse 10. In Psalms 92 verse 10 it says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I'm going to read that same scripture to you from the Amplified Bible. You just look there at King James. I know you have it in Latin. Look at what it says. And my horn, which emblems of strength and power, my horn is the emblem of strength and power, you have exalted like that of a wild ox. I love this translation of how they brought that out. Because a unicorn don't make any sense to me. You see, a unicorn, I, I'm thinking about that thing that's on cartoons, you know, that, that the kids are watching. You know, I'm thinking about that little white horse with that horn coming out of it. That's called a unicorn. So it didn't make any sense. But I love this translation. That unicorn literally means wild ox. Amen? Now, wild ox got two horns coming up. Amen? Has anybody ever seen a bull with two horns? You got any bulls out there in that field, brother, that got some horns on them? Amen? Look, a, a, a bull's got horns. Amen? And they hold those horns up so an ox has got horns coming out of his head and it's holding up toward the sky. Amen? Now 
Now, now think about that wild ox and look at that again. Look at that again. Mm. In my heart, which emulates my strength and power, you have exalted like that of the wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil for your service. Woo, hallelujah. What did I say last week? God don't give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He don't give you the anointing of God for your entertainment. Come on. But He gives it to you like Dr. Tim Hill said. He gives it to you for your employment. Hallelujah. Because you can employ the anointing of God. Amen. Amen. I told you Friday night. I told you about our daddy this morning. And we found out he's on that plane for three weeks before we got the word. Immediately we started praying on Wednesday night. I said, Angel, let's release the anointing right now. Let's release the anointing. Listen, we were in the mountains of Georgia and, and, and the signal was coming in and out and they were making multiple phone calls trying to hear everything that was going on. But listen, let the anointing begin to be released upon her daddy's body right now. And when we got to the hospital, when we got to the ICU the next morning, they told us he started getting better last night. Hallelujah! He's been there for 13 days on 100% life support. 100%! And Angel testified this morning, she got off the phone today, they never took the heart machines off of him, praise God! His heart is beating on his own, amen! And he's getting better! He went from 85% oxygen down to 45 Come on, somebody! I'm talking about releasing the anointing! Woo. I can preach that sermon again, but go ahead and watch it. It's on YouTube. Friday night service, amen? And when you watch it, hit that little like button. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Our spiritual horns in our emblems of strength, we are to hold up our horns. You know, a, a bull and a wild ox, they hold their heads up and their horns lift up to the sky. Y'all see the positions of my hands right now? What does it resemble? The horns. The horns is where the anointing is. The horns carry the fresh oil of the anointing. Let's get you to lift your hands toward heaven. Come on. Because in your hands, in your arms, representing the horns of God. It may represent the horn that carries the oil. Amen. It's right here, church. This is our horns. Those are two hands in the air as we surrender it all to God. Let the anointing flow. Let the anointing flow. Come on. Don't do one of these little numbers because your horns
special breed of bulls. I mean, they're muscular bulls. They got, they got muscles on their ear holes. I mean, they look like they've been down here at God's gym pumping iron. You know what I'm saying? They got, they got muscles all over the place. I mean, even their hooves look strong. They got muscles on them. Everything's got muscles on it. They're so big and so strong. This is a special breed of a bull. But this is what he told us. He says, he says, days before the bullfight, he said, they will capture this bull and they will take wet paper and they will clog the ears of those bulls' ears with wet paper so that they cannot hear. They want to deafen the bull. And then they take Vaseline and they smear Vaseline over the eyes of the bull so that it cannot see. And then they take the bull and they put it in total darkness for days. So for days, this bull has got this wet paper in its ears. Its eyes are covered up with Vaseline. It can't hear. It can't see. It's confused. And then after so many days, they begin to open the doors at the end of the tunnel. And that, that sunlight is piercing through. And so when that bull gets into that sunlight, it's blinding that bull. That bull gets into the arena. And it's an unfair fight from the beginning. That bull has been weakened. That bull has been, has been confused for days. That the devil had not put, uh, put that stuff in his ears. Listen, church, we've got stuff in our ears. The devil has been deafening the church for generations and generations. Come on. He's been deafening the church so much that the church, some people can barely hear the word of God. Some people can barely hear the spirit of God because the devil has stopped their ears. Listen, church, we need to unclog our ears, our spiritual ears this morning and hear what thus saith God this morning. And then that bull not only can hear, but now it can't see. And so that first sunlight piercing through is blinding and the bull is confused. Has anybody here ever been confused before? So it's an unfair fight. And then the matador. And, and the, the matador to me just represents the devil. He's got six, he's got six knives. And I found out he said that there was actually three matadors. The last one is the real matador. He's the one that does the death blow on it. But the other two are on foot. The last one's on a horse when it comes out to do that death blow. But the one that comes out first has got, has got those knives. And there's six of them. And they're sharp. And they're jagged. And they're designed to go into that bull's neck. That big, strong neck that's holding up the horns. You see, they call this process, listen to this. They call this process draining the horns. Let that soak into you for a moment. Draining the horns. You see, the horns are the power of the bull. The horns is the power of the bull. The anointing is the power of the church. Come on. The anointing is the power of the church. And these horns are the power of the bull. And they call that draining the horns. And he said that they would stab that, that bull in the neck. And that, that that spear would go in and it would stay there. They would leave it there. And it would begin to move back and forth, cutting the muscles of the neck, cutting the vertebrae, and so it begins to bleed to death so it can get weaker and weaker. And this is a process that goes on, and they got knives on both sides of it. And then the other matadors come out, and they begin to stab it in the steer. But listen, this is what happens. The, the, the longer this, this goes before that bull dies, you begin to see that bull begins to lower its head. You see, it can't take the pain from the stabbing of, of the knives in its neck. It begins to, it begins to lower its head. Listen, I, I know this is a gruesome message this morning, but let me remind you that the, that the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's all about the blood, amen? It's all about the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus don't look pretty on the cross, amen? amen. So this bull begins to lower its head as it's bleeding to death. It's dazed, it's confused. It, the ears are still stopped up. The Vaseline is still on its eyes. It's struggling to understand what is happening to it and what's going on. Listen, they do that because they know that if that bull comes in there with full strength, if that bull comes in there with ears they can hear and eyes they can see, and if that bull comes in there with his head held up high and his chest stuck out, come on, looking like a royal priest of God, but them horns, they, 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 they know that they, that bull will kill them. They know for that powerful bull. But through the process of the stabbing, the horns get lowered and lowered to 
that the bull can no longer lift his horns. And then they come in with the death blow. You see, church, that's exactly what the devil has been doing to the church. That's exactly what the devil has been trying to do to you. He begins to put all kinds of obstacles in your life. He puts all kinds of situations in your life. And before you know it, you're missing church. And before you know it, you're not reading your Bible. Come on. And before you know it, you're not praying. And before you know it, your ears are so hogged up with the junk that the devil has put in there that you can no longer even hear the Spirit of God when He's speaking to you. Come on. And you can no longer hear or understand the Word of God when it's being read to you. The devil has done this to the church for generations. He's done it to you. He's blinded your eyes from even seeing the truth. He's blinded the eyes of the church from seeing the truth. And then when the church is blinded and confused and cannot hear, He has stabbed us in our necks so that our horns of praise come down. Come on. This is why it's so important for people to stand on their feet and to put their hands in the air and begin to worship God because you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to flow in your life. Listen, it don't matter what's going on. It don't matter what lie the devil has told you. It don't matter what the doctor report is. It don't matter what's going on in work. Put your hands in the air and begin to praise God. Amen. Put your hands in the air and begin to worship God. And the anointing will come. This is the anointing will heal that bull's neck. The anointing will pop those swords right out of his neck. The anointing will pick up the horns of the altar again. The anointing will give you strength and it will give you power to Turn. 
But I want you to see something in that story as well. When you start getting into the fire of God, when you start doing something for God, the devil will always come out in the midst of the fire and try to latch on to you. But just like Paul, shake it off! Shake it off! In the name of Jesus, shake it off! Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. You got something you can pray for or something? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. If you need prayer, come on. Let's just get us a line going. You know you do, so just come on anyway. Y'all stand in your feet. Come on, let's just, let's just get that heat on line going. Let's just get the anointing flowing. You need something from God, come on. Hallelujah.